Today was the first day of fall semester. Um, today, I, Mondays, I only have vector calculus. I got into class, you know, went like you would expect. Professor went over the syllabus and what to expect and some of the stuff that's going to be covered and when the tests are and every, specifics about the final and whether or not attendance is mandatory on and on and on. And then he decided to um, do kind of a refresher of Calculus 3 and I'm like, thanks. Because at least the first three weeks of my Vector Calculus class is more or less a refresher of Calculus 3, maybe a little bit more in depth, but basically the same thing. And then he said, well, even beyond that, let's do a refresher Calc 1. And I'm like, all right, it's, I mean, what else are we going to do on day one? Surely not jump, you know, head first into, into Vector Calculus. So yeah, I'll go with it. Why not? Can't hurt. I could use a refresher all the time, always. And so I don't know why he chose like number theory specifically, but he started talking about different types of numbers, natural numbers, integers, the rationals, and then he gets to real numbers and he's like, can anyone give a definition of real numbers? And some, uh, someone gave a, a definition based on set theory or in terms of sets. And he's like, no, I want something more fundamental than that. And someone else tried to, you know, said something about geometry and a Cartesian plane and he was like, no, I want more fundamental than that. And we're all just like, I don't know. A real number? I, you know, it's stuff on the number line. And he's like, well, yeah, but let's, let's take it a step further. And ultimately he gave a definition that was uh, built upon proving a one-to-one -one corresponding relationship between numbers and points on a line. I was like, that's cool. I've never seen that before. And then he was talking about how, um, you know, kind of segued into some, some, some irrational numbers like the square root of two and, and how you would get it. And then he, you know, he, he wrote it out. He's like, okay, the x squared equals two, then x equals the square root of two. The square root of two is, you know, 1.4121, whatever. And they said, well, then, you know, let's say it's equal to one plus four, one, four, two, whatever. And then he wrote it as a fraction. So one plus two over 10 plus one over a hundred plus four over a thousand, or he wrote it in exponential form, but, and then he turned that into an infinite sum. And I was like, that's neat. I've never seen that before. I've never seen a, a you know, an infinite sum used to, used to denote a, an irrational number like square root of two. And I was thinking about it, and at that point I was kind of, kind of started thinking about this stuff, and I wasn't really paying attention, and as I was walking the half mile back to my car, I'm like, yeah, I really like that. That, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, obviously you have to learn a bunch of stuff. You have to learn algebra and, you know, a little bit of pre-calculus and, and stuff like that before you can take a step back and really get your feet wet into stuff like number theory or set theory or a little bit of abstract math but I think even you know an adept high schooler could do that or even you know a freshman in college or a sophomore in college could do that no problem set theory and you know a little bit of abstract math I'm like yeah why why isn't this more often I feel like in a, in a, in a perfect world when it comes to math education if we're talking about let's just say math majors, because obviously not everyone needs to be familiar with number theory and, and set theory and abstract math and all of that weird looking stuff. But if we're talking about math majors, it seems to make a lot of sense to me to always um, try and take it back to, back to basics. So I didn't, I didn't, um, I wasn't introduced to like really introductory uh, set theory until I got to linear algebra. And even then it wasn't addressed as set theory. It was just kind of thrown at me and I had to figure out what it was and do a lot of Googling and, and, and text reading and stuff like that. But after I figured out, I was like, okay, this makes sense. It's a very simple thing. We're using it in this very abstract thing. I got it. All right, all right, I like it. And I saw that a little bit more um, as I went on. And so I'm just saying all that to say that it, it makes a lot of sense to Every time you're, 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 you're taking a step up the ladder to something higher up, linear algebra, abstract math, vector calc, abstract algebra especially maybe, to, to look back down the ladder and see where it all came from and try and, 
try and state it in as fundamental way as possible and then build back up to the thing you're talking about. Like, um, for example, one of the most notable things that comes to my mind is when I was first taking calculus and learning about integrals. And I saw a Riemann sum once. And I never did anything with it, it was just written on the board. And my professor, who was a, a graduate student, was just like, this is a Riemann sum. We go from this to this. And then he showed, you know, the fundamental theorem of calculus and an integral and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, uh, hold the phone. What is that? Why? What? What is it? Why are you using? Where'd that come from? Why? What for? I feel like that, that step was overlooked and you just skipped a step up the ladder. And I was like, yeah, we might need that step. It could, that could be really useful. So I don't know. So if, if my, if my course continues to be like this, it's going to be great. Maybe the, maybe the best math course. Cause I've never seen, I've never had a, a, a math professor that made a point to to look back and, and talk about stuff in a really fundamental level. It's almost always been about building and building and building, building Calc 2 off of Calc 1, Calc 3 off of Calc 2, off of Calc 1, et cetera, et cetera, linear algebra off of, you know, pre-calc and all this other stuff. And so I think, I think there's a, you know, a little room to tweak it there, but just my two cents. Thanks for watching. See you next time.